Hello there everybody, it is me Fizer Bunny, and welcome, welcome back to another Sims 4 speed building video. So today we're speed building a mansion called the Monty Manor, and this is the second speed build in a series of builds where we try to recreate some of the houses in the Sims 2 world of Ronneville. Oh wait, what was that? I'm pronouncing it wrong. Apparently, it's pronounced Veronaville. So literally, a couple of you guys lost it in the comments. Like, I think somebody had like a mental breakdown because apparently I've been pronouncing Veronaville incorrectly. So hopefully, I'm doing a better job at it this time. <laughs> I am definitely really grateful for you guys for educating me on that. So yeah, thanks for educating me on that. But anyway, this is the second in kind of like a three-part speed build where we try to reimagine um, some of the homes in The Sims 2 Worlds of Veronaville. And basically, if you guys aren't familiar with that world, um, Veronaville is one of the three original neighborhoods that came with The Sims 2 base game. And the backstory of this neighborhood is actually inspired by the works of William Shakespeare, specifically Romeo and Juliet, but other characters from other works of Shakespeare also make an appearance, such as some characters from A Midsummer Night's Dream. So, um, so for the Monty Manor, we have kind of like a Spanish-themed, Spanish-inspired mansion here. Um, in my previous speed build in this series, which was the um, Tudor-style Cap Castle, I've kind of established the fact that the Caps have this kind of Tudor Elizabethan-inspired mansion. And for this one, I wanted to kind of keep that inspiration and still kind of place it within Europe, you know, within mainland Europe. So I definitely sought inspiration from the architecture of mainland Spain. And what really inspired me is actually the architecture of Andalusia region in Spain, which is actually a region in Spain known for the fact that it was colonized by the Moors um, for about six or seven centuries, starting in about the seventh century. And it ended at like the 14th century or like the 15th century during the Reconquista. But because of centuries of Muslim influence, um, this region in Spain developed a very unique style of architecture known as Mudejar architecture. And for those of you guys who are unfamiliar with me, I am currently working on my architecture degree. And um, one of my favorite classes to go to was my history of architecture because it was so much fun to learn about all the different histories and cultures all over the world. And I was so interested to learn that Spain used to be um, ruled or like a huge part of Spain used to be ruled by the Muslims. And one of the things that we have to credit them for is our use of the um, Arabic numerals <laughs> for our math because apparently Arabic numerals are easier to learn than Lat the Latin numerals. So um, the Muslims are the ones who kind of um, kind of like popularize their use of that. So anyway, back to the build. Um, <clears throat> This mansion is a four-bedroom, five-bedroom mansion, um, and most of the bedrooms are customized based on the characters that we know of in the Sims 2 Veronaville, except for one bedroom, which is kind of just like um, a very generic, basic bedroom, which is the guest bedroom, pretty much. Um, and yeah, like... What's really interesting about this build is that it's pretty spread out. Like, you know, it's actually very, um, you know, most of the important rooms are located on the ground level, except for a couple of bedrooms on the second floor, as well as kind of like a gaming slash gambling area on the topmost tower level. Uh, most of the important rooms, like the living room, dining room, kitchen, and the master bedroom is actually on the ground level. Um, 
And obviously, you guys can see right now, the most prominent feature of this build is actually the courtyard. And, um, you know, I wanted to keep that aspect of it because in The Sims 2, the Monty house actually has a very prominently featured courtyard. Um, the house, I believe, in The Sims 2 is referred to as the Monty Ranch or something. So, um, of course, I want to keep all of my builds kind of like um similarly named um where i use an you know i use kind of like alliterations to name my builds not all the time but sometimes i prefer to use alliteration because it kind of like makes me smile a little bit so um i chose to name this monty manor instead of monty ranch because i just felt like monty manor sounded a lot better and a lot more fun and once again i just have to kind of reiterate the fact that we're not recreating um the houses in the sims 2 like 100 as they are in the sims 2 we're making kind of like our own versions of them we're kind of like reimagining them as if how they would be built in the sims 4 which is a very very different game than the sims 2 and the definitely the way you would build in the sims 4 is a lot different than how you would build in the sims 2 uh, so really, really quickly, just to recap, just for those of you guys who are not familiar with the story of Romeo and Juliet or of Veronaville, um, basically, there's two families that are alike in dignity and prestige and in wealth. They're basically two equal sides of society or of the shell or whatever. And um, for some reason, these two families are warring with each other. The Montes, which is short for for Montague and the Cap and the Cap family, which is short for Capulet, are arch enemies. And this all started during the generation of Romeo and Juliet's grandparents, um, Patricio Monti and Consort Cap, which apparently um, Consort broke a promise that he made to Patricio, and um, that's where all of this whole argument stirred from and you know the younger generation is kind of like face still dealing with the re repercussions of it because for some reason Romeo and Juliet are in love with each other and they cannot be together because their families are fighting um their families are arch enemies and of course everybody is kind of against them together um except for probably some of their siblings but I'm not gonna get too deep into that but um so the Montes are a family of four people, living people right now. We have Patricio and his wife, Isabella. And then we have the two siblings, Romeo and Mercutio. Um, so I'm going to be talking more about their personalities as we decorate their bedrooms uh, or the other rooms that are kind of relevant to their personalities because, like I said, this house is pretty much customized in accordance to those Sims' personalities. But you guys can see me actually incorporate some Murehar features here, which is, um, I refer to these as a Moorish arch, but I think that they, these are also called horseshoe arches um, because they're shaped like horseshoes and they are a prominent feature in Muslim architecture all over the world from india to morocco to spain um you know you can find these horseshoe arches but i just was really inspired by the architecture of andalusia specifically because it was just so unique and when you guys see examples of architecture like the alhambra in granada or the great mosque of cordoba you will kind of be amazed by what people achieved during the quote unquote dark ages because because it wasn't really the dark ages it was you know you know some parts of the world were still flourishing at that time so a lot of people are actually reacting negatively every time people would refer to that as the dark ages but whatever and i also mentioned earlier that i might have been a little bit inspired by the Granada in I'm mean, no, by the Alhambra in Granada because pretty much the Alhambra is like the prime example of Mudahar architecture and the Alhambra in Granada is basically composed of many different courtyards and <laughs> doing this build I realized that 
building with a courtyard is a little bit difficult and it's a little bit tricky because um, normally you would design your house facing outward. You know, the rooms would be oriented to have a good view of the outside, right? Because that's normally what you would have in normal houses. But if you have a house that has a courtyard, you have this additional kind of difficulty level because you also have to design rooms that are oriented towards the inside facing the courtyard so this was a little bit tricky for me especially to plan but I don't know I really really love the courtyard it's like one of my favorite features of this house it's just so unique um and I think it turned out really well you guys can see some taste of landscaping for this because um I wanted to have a good feel of how the landscaping would look like just to have an idea of what the people inside of the rooms would be looking at so you guys can see that there's some windows that are facing towards the courtyard and this um landscaping scheme here it will be continued on with the outside as well um disclaimer i did have to edit out a huge chunk of this build probably 20 to 25 percent of this build i had to edit out because i was pressed for time and i was really trying to make sure that this build did not go over my time limit of 50 minutes because for me that's like the ultimate time crunch you know if i have a bill that is over 50 minutes i would probably like split it into multiple parts but for this one since i'm making it it's since it's already like in a series and stuff i didn't want to make it into multiple parts because that would just have been a lot more complicated for me to establish and to deal with so um you know it's like you know the speed build itself is about 43 minutes and I'm estimating it to probably be around 48 minutes, including the intro, outro, and also the house tour video as well. So yeah. Um, for those of you who have a keen eye for observation, you would notice that there are a lot of touches of ceramic tiles in this build. There's a lot of like little subtle nuance, um, kind of like decorative elements that I incorporated that do reference architecture of Spain and just architecture of the Mediterranean in general. We have these um, azulejos tiles that I kind of spread out everywhere. You can find them in some floorings, you can find them in some staircases, you can find them in some wallpaper, you know, that's like a little bit of like a nod to the architecture of the Mediterranean. You can even find them around like the fence that I chose to line the roofs with because it has a beautiful kind of like um, blue color that I feel like just really takes me to the Mediterranean. So, um... You know, it's it's pretty cool. And the Azulejos tiles, I believe, are a more Portuguese um, architectural detail. But they can also be found in Spanish architecture as well. And even in Spanish-influenced um, architecture, even in my country, in the Philippines, not many people know, but the Philippines is actually a, used to be a Spanish colony. And in my country, we also have a tradition of using these kinds of tiles we actually call them machuca tiles and you know the family that manufactures them still do them still manufactures them to this day which is amazing and you know these tiles can actually be found in many old structures and many ancient structures like old houses and old churches you can still find these traditional spanish tiles so you know it's it's like a it's like you know it's like a common thread that links um kind of like these mediterranean influenced countries all over the world from america to asia to of course europe and everywhere in between i feel like there's always that um you know there's always that kind of like um you know like organic development of architecture where it really finds a way to creep into people's cultures and you know it's interesting how even the most exotic cultures can still absorb these traditions 
that originate from somewhere else and they can incorporate them in unique ways just like these um azulejo styles are still being practiced and you know they are still being produced here in the philippines in a different way but also traces their origins back to europe and it's pretty cool so right now we're working on the kitchen and it's actually quite a large kitchen isabella monti she is known for making delicious meals specifically her baked alaska and if you guys are not familiar with what a baked alaska is it's a very fancy dessert in the sims 2 and it's kind of like it's kind of like a mountain of cream that you light up on fire i'm i kid you guys not in the sims 2 they would freaking light it up on fire like to serve it and stuff it was pretty awesome so isabella monti she is known for her cooking skill so i made sure to give her um a really good sized kitchen with all the amenities um a madre de familia would need so yes and then for the dining room it's just a pretty basic room to be honest nothing too too crazy but you know it gets the job done and it has those um azulejos tiles i'm gonna refer to them as azulejos i'm not sure if i'm being politically correct but you know what i'm only human i make mistakes just like when i was pronouncing veronaville incorrectly so yes veronaville <laughs> it still sounds wrong though i'm not sure what i'm doing wrong but veronaville <laughs> anyway so um for the dining room um there's a lot of wooden furniture i also incorporated a lot of kind of like rural farming um aspects to this like those cabinets remind me of things that you would probably find in a farm and that's kind of like a recurring theme all throughout this build you guys will see me actually incorporate some you know farming touches to this house you know there's gonna be some um sculptures that are farm animals there's like some chicken sculptures that i'm gonna be placing later on i think there's like this one chicken with like an egg thing that also kind of reminds me a lot of like the rural area and that actually kind of carries on to the lore that i believe that i personally made up myself but you know i like to believe that it is the lore behind the montes um because the montes live on the side of veronaville veronaville where it's like um really sparsely populated and relatively underdeveloped compared to the side of veronaville where the caps live and i've always thought to myself that the montes get their wealth from farming and then the caps they get their wealth from renting their land that's why there's so many different townhouses and houses in general in the cap side of veronaville and then for the monty side there's literally nobody else that lives there it's just a bunch of like haciendas and also there's this one interesting lot where it's like a silo or it's like a farm um, I don't know, it's like a, it's like a barn or a silo type of thing. So, you know, that kind of led me to assume that, um, you know, the Montes probably get their wealth from farming while the Caps, they, they're kind of more of like landowners and they rent their land to, you know, to their tenants. And it's really interesting though because um, it is mentioned in The Sims 2 that Consort and Patricio used to be um, business partners until one fateful day where their relationship went you know, downhill, and, you know, they argued with each other. We don't really know actually what was the cause. It's just implied that... Um, consort broke a promise but you know they really don't elaborate on that and i think that that's something that they leave up to the player to think about but yeah um right now we're actually working on kind of like the formal office area so you know since um, you know, the, the Montes are kind of like farming people. This is probably where they would make deals for people who would, you know, sell their crops or for people who would be farming their land. This is probably where the um farmer boss would 
receive important you know important people to have business deals with and stuff so i always make sure to put at least an office area so yeah it's um you know it's there <laughs> and it makes sense there's also like a nice little vault as well so that you know they can keep important documents in there and stuff so um you know like you know just for security measures uh, you never know when the cap spies would sneak into our house and steal some important documents. Um, anyway, we're working right now on the master suite, which is actually a series of three rooms. There is the bedroom itself, there's a walk-in closet, and there's also the master bathroom as well. So for the master bathroom, it is the only bathroom in this entire house that we're going to furnish because that's kind of like my policy. <laughs> I love how I'm calling it a policy, but basically when I do my speed builds, especially for the longer ones, I choose to not include the furnishing of the bathrooms just because those tend to get very repetitive and redundant. Except for the master bathroom, I try to include at least one bathroom in my furnishing footage just to give you guys an idea of how it's going to look like. But the master bedroom actually turned out really nice. It's very beautiful and very spacious. Um... And there's a lot of room for Patricio and Isabella here. And, you know, there's even like a little kind of like sitting area as well. And it, it's actually really nice. I, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It looks very contemporary, actually, which I totally don't have a problem with. I feel like it looks pretty legit. It, it reminds me a lot of those living rooms that... Or like those just those rooms that we would see in like those telenovelas. Or in my country, they're known as telenovelas. But in Latin America, I think they're just known as novellas. And yes, they air it in the Philippines like um, Mexican and Colombian TV series. Believe it or not, they do. Um, like, I don't know, uh, Marimar and um, Rosalinda, which was hugely popular in the Philippines. And Betty La Fea. Of course, they dub it in Filipino because, you know... Um, in the Philippines, we don't speak Spanish. We have our own language. Um, and, and it's actually really surprising to me because a lot of people actually think that people in the Philippines can speak Spanish. And that's only partly true because our language is very much influenced by Spanish language. There's a lot of words that we borrow from the Spanish vocabulary. But Filipino language is very, very different from Espanol. But, you know, to some degree, we can, you know, kind of understand, but it's very, very different. Just, you know, anyway, I forgot to mention, though, but this house, very much like the progression of the house of the Cap family, was also originally supposed to be a castle that was built during the medieval period. It was probably supposed to be like a Murahar castle. And then... At some point in its history, it got destroyed, and then the descendants of the Monty family decided to relocate here amongst the ruins, and they basically built a brand new mansion in between those ruins um, because they wanted to keep their um, the memory of their ancestors intact. So they didn't want to demolish the ruins, they just built around it a newer house. Um, so if you, if you guys actually look at the outside, you would see that there is a castle aspect to it. And the castle bits are the ones that are supposed to be the older parts of the house. And then the orangey kind of salmon color are the one parts that are newer in the house. So I'm imagining the salmon parts. I love how I refer to them as the salmon parts, but the newer parts of the house, I'm imagining that they would have been added probably around the 18th century um you know because that's just how i see it you know you whatever you guys can come up with your own theories if you want to but a little while back we just furnished the guest bedroom and the guest bedroom's pretty basic to be honest there's really nothing too, too crazy about it it's just um a bunch of neutral colors um and you know anybody can you know stay there even juliet if she wants to stay over that would be really weird though but yeah um, so I actually struggled with identifying what to make this room as, but eventually I decided to make it into a 
music room actually which is a really interesting place to have the music room um initially i was only planning to make this the sitting area but you know what i was like you know we need a music room and i really really like how this room came out it looks really special in a way it also looks very it, it's also a little bit of an unusual room as well because there's a bunch of like really you know there's a bunch of items that are not supposed to be together usually you know there's a fountain and there's also a piano and there's an archway which implies that this room is you know semi outdoors so you know it's a really interesting mix of room but you know eventually it came together really nicely i love the colors i love that rug i love it so much I actually use that rug extensively all throughout this build. And you guys can see me actually place in a one chicken or actually a one rooster sculpture, which is the start of the farming influence. You guys will see me place a lot more farming related items later on. But right now, the room that we're working on is kind of like the den for the boys. I think it's really interesting how... Um, all of the teenagers in the story of Veronaville unfortunately don't have any parents anymore. All of them live with their grandparents, like Romeo and Benvol- Romeo and Mercutio. Oh my gosh, I keep forgetting their names. Romeo and Mercutio both live with their grandparents, Isabella and Patricio. As well as Juliet and her siblings, um, Tybalt and Tybalt and Hermia, they also live with their grandfather. So you know, um, but yeah, the boys. This is kind of like their den. This is like the private space for them to play games and just to let loose. Maybe bring some of their friends over to have a game of foosball or have a game of whatever is in the console. Um, so yeah, this is like a nice little den for them to kind of just you know have fun and be be boys because boys will, will be boys. So yeah. You know, maybe if Juliet and Romeo get together in the end, maybe they can also invite Tybalt over. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his name. Can somebody educate me on that? How does one pronounce Tybalt's name? Because, you know, it's Tybalt, but some people pronounce it Tybalt. So, I'm, you know, my tongue gets confused. Uh, so it looks like we finally made it to the second floor and the only rooms in this level are a hallway, <laughs> a really, really long hallway, which actually was really weird to furnish because it was really, really long. And also the bedrooms of the boys, Romeo and Mercutio. And basically, um, it was a really tricky thing to furnish because I had to incorporate this hallway, which leads to a staircase that leads to the topmost level of this watchtower thing so in order to do that i had to like split mercutio's oh no yeah i had to split mercutio's room and it it ended up with a really awkward shape but yeah uh we are currently working on romeo's bedroom and romeo he is i like to think that romeo is kind of like the star child of the monty family he is kind of like the flagship child of this family if that makes any sense romeo i feel like he would be like the type of guy that is literally perfect in the eyes of his parents or in this case in the eyes of his grandparents other than the fact that he is in love with the daughter of the enemy i feel like romeo is actually kind of like um you know he is the center of attention, which kind of gives me more, you know, which kind of makes me more sympathetic towards um, Mercutio because I feel like nobody really pays attention to Mercutio so much. So, um, yeah, Romeo has the larger bedroom and he is a stud, basically, I think, based on his description in The Sims 2. He is very charismatic, he's very outgoing, and... I also made him very athletic as well. So his bedroom, there's a lot of like sports related items. Um, and there's also like um, a weightlifting thing over there as well. I also tried to consider possibly placing in like a basketball court, but the basketballs are so big, like they're impossible to incorporate in builds. So, um, you know, I wasn't able to do that, but um 
basically Romeo's bedroom literally has everything that a teenager needs in order to survive. <laughs> literally, he has a TV, he has a stereo, he has a computer, he has an exercise equipment. Literally, why would he even leave his room? <laughs> because if that was me, I would never go out. But yeah, uh, he also has a bedroom that has a predominantly blue color scheme um, and a lot of wood accents as well. So, you know, there's a lot of like blues and, you know, dark woods, which actually make for a really, really good combination. And yeah, it all came together really nicely. I actually took my time a lot with personalizing the bedrooms of the boys just because I really wanted to make sure that their personalities were taken into consideration when I was furnishing this. And also, both Romeo and um, Mercutio's bedroom are come with, I mean, both their bedrooms come with an ensuite bath. So those bathrooms were will not be furnished, unfortunately, because once again, we're pressed for time. Uh, but for Mercutio's bedroom, it's actually, um, it actually has a green color scheme. And to be honest with you guys, I really had no idea what to do with this bedroom. I only knew that I wanted to incorporate like, um, a TV, of course. No, actually, no. I don't put a TV, but there is going to be a computer here, which I will put off camera because um, I realized that I want to put a computer instead of a TV because I feel like a computer would be a little bit more useful to a teenager boy. Anyway, um, so for Mercutio's personality, I really wanted to put in a microphone in his bedroom because Mercutio is actually the comedian. So, you know, unlike Romeo, who has a lot of responsibility as kind of like the star child of the Monty family, um, Mercutio kind of can get away with being more sarcastic and taking life a little bit more laid back. So, you know, he is the comedian and I feel like he would also mediate in between, you know, um, you know, like Romeo and Juliet, he would probably help out his brother when Romeo would be sneaking out and stuff. You know, they 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 could he could probably help them out. Um, but I also realized when I was doing this build that um he can also practice singing in the microphone. So maybe he can also be like a balladeer and sing ballads about the story of his brother and his future sister-in-law. If you guys decide to take that storyline to that because you know we can always do whatever we want with these sim stories you know we could you know we could make romeo marry to Balt, you know if we wanted to so um yeah the last room that we're gonna furnish in the main house is this kind of like game room slash gambling room <laughs> um i put it specifically here because i wanted to have some privacy and also um i wanted this observation tower to um have a purpose <laughs> You know, because, you know, I, it, it would have been great to have a telescope or something, but those are just too big to have. So instead, I just made it a, a game room where we can say that uh, Patricio would go meet up with his mafia friends and maybe, you know, like um, gamble away their land or something like that. Maybe, you know, maybe his argument with um, Consort Cap actually was due to their misunderstanding when they were gambling who knows you know it's a story that we can kind of make up as we go but yeah um this is that um and this is the point where i decided that a lot of big changes need to happen in the build so i will be doing some major major changes to this actually um to be specific, I change the outside a little bit, like the landscaping and stuff, I change it. Initially, the plan was to have a fence in the front, but I decided to scrap that idea because I just didn't like how the fence looked. Um, and also the garage, I decided to orient it differently um, because I wanted to add a couple of extra rooms. I realized at this point that I was missing... Um, 
kind of like a mausoleum area, which is really, really important because, you know, all throughout this build, I've been talking a lot about how, you know, both the Montes and the Caps really have a lot of respect for their ancestors. And I literally realized that I had no space to keep the remains of their deceased, um, which is a really interesting thing because in The Sims 2, the Montes actually live in a house that has their um deceased inside of the house. They have their dead um grand ancestors in like a hallway, which is which I personally found really weird. Like I found I you know it was really weird for me because like really in a hallway. Um but you know what to each his own and I'm not here to judge other people's cultures. It was just a little bit weird for me, but I still kind of want to keep that aspect in a way. So I decided to actually make a room that was dedicated to their ancestors, but I placed it in a more quiet and secluded corner of the build, which even has its own kind of like garden area because you know, it the, the afterlife, you need a little bit of tranquility <laughs> or so I say. But the garage, I also changed the design of it a little bit as well, um, just to have an extra watchtower because, you know, um, watchtowers, you know, very Hispanic, maybe not, I don't know. But um, yeah, also working on the front yard, these are going to be parterres um, or decorative planter beds. <laughs> I love how I always have to explain that. But for the Montes, I actually gave them two cars, one automobile and one truck. Because like I said earlier in this video, I I think the Montes have a farming business. So I feel like having a truck would be very, very useful to them. From an economic perspective. Also inside of this would. There's also like a workbench inside of the garage as well. So maybe we can say that Patricio. When he retires he wants to make a living out of repairing cars. Or maybe have a hobby of you know. Tinkering with cars or something. So yay. Uh, so the two rooms that we're working on right now. Are kind of like the mausoleum area of the house this one room to the really to the edge of the house is the actual mausoleum itself and it has two urns in it the urns came with the vampires game pack and i felt like they look so spanish i felt like they look so good and i felt like they kind of fit in exactly the look that i was going for you know in a kind of like um day of the dead kind of way if that makes any sense um i think that that is actually a practice that they do in mexico not necessarily in mainland spain but i want to share some more info with you guys we also celebrate a similar um holiday um, during the first and second of november which i'm pretty sure is like a mexican influence in our culture we also have like a Day of the Dead. It's less of a festival and more of like a spiritual, religious kind of thing. But yeah, talking about all this death and stuff, I had to turn on the lights because I'm getting a little bit creeped out. It's 11.53 right now. Um, I just finished um, a recording session when I was building the Summer Dream house and I'm still torn what to call it. Um, it's either going to be called Summer Dream Estate, which is the closest thing to an alliteration that we can get, even though I also contemplated on naming it the Summer, Summer Dream Schloss or Schloss, I'm not sure. But Schloss is a German word actually for a castle or country house, I think. And that was also like an alliteration. But if I called it that though, I don't think that many people would get it. Um, but some of you guys actually recommended that I just call it Summer Dream Estate because, you know, the estate has kind of like an S sound to it. So that's the closest thing that I'm probably going to name it or I'm probably going to call it Summer Dream Palace because that was the original name that I was going to name it, but whatever. Anyway, um, I'm getting a little bit creeped out because I'm currently watching the Legion TV series with Dan Stevens 
it takes place in the Marvel universe or whatever. I actually don't think so. But Legion, honestly, you guys, is literally like a horror movie that disguises itself as like a superhero TV series. It is so scary. Like, I'm in episode four right now and literally episode three and episode four scared the crap out of me like i'm so scared i'm so scared like literally i'm so scared um i'm so scared of the, the yellow eyed demon i'm so scared of like the angriest kid in the world it's so scary and also jump scares i hate jump scares like you know i love watching um horror movies and stuff when i'm with other people because i kind of like to be scared just like many people but if i'm by myself like right now i'm just kind of like creeped out so i had to take a second to turn on the lights right there so whatever um yeah, uh, this area right here is kind of like the pool slash party area. I like to think of this area as like a courtyard, but it's not really a courtyard because, you know, it only has two sides enclosed and the rest is just like enclosed by walls or whatever, if that makes any sense. But um, right now we're just laying out the planter beds and those planter beds will actually be filled in off camera because ain't nobody got time for that. Um, literally, I, the landscaping for this, honestly, you guys, believe it or not, turned out a lot more complicated than the landscaping for the Cap Castle just because the landscaping for this was mostly planter beds and I had to fill up all of those individual planter beds individually with a lot of plants because for the landscaping I really wanted to keep more of like a Mediterranean looking landscape so it's a little bit lush unfortunately we don't have that many Mediterranean themed gardening flora I was gonna say fauna but flora um but we have those cypress at least which are the closest thing to a Mediterranean plant that I can find. Also, I just realized this recently, but those cypress trees are actually called like the graveyard cypress. Like, why are there just so many freaking death references in this video? Like, it's so creepy. Also, it is the um it's the Lenten season, so um yes, we should all um I guess reflect on the things that we've done, I don't really know what you do in Lent, to be honest. I guess everybody tries to be penitent in Lent and has a sacrifice or something. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's let's not talk about that because things are beginning to creep me out. But for the outside, I made sure that I had a bar and a couple of lounge chairs and also like a place to have a barbecue. So those will be incorporated right there. Um, I love using that portable bar. I'm not actually sure what expansion pack that came with. I'm assuming it pro it's, it's a type of thing that would, would have come with, um, get together probably. So, um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm just going to say it came with get together. <laughs> probably not but literally those bars um with like the christmas lights or the fairy lights i've used those in like maybe my past five builds and those are just so nice they're so versatile and i really like using i really like using them actually so yeah and finally we have reached the last part of this build that we're going to be furnishing and this is actually a very special part because this is a part of the house that is exclusively built for um Isabella Monty. I feel like Isabella needs more love and you know people know her as the girl who cooks but I feel like she's more than that and I decided to give her this space to escape all of the chaos you know having two boys and having to deal with a husband who has an arch enemy and stuff it has to be so stressful so this is kind of like the space for Isabella it's a beautiful kind of meditation space which has amazing views of the neighboring landscape surrounding it in um, Oasis Springs. It has such amazing views. This lot in Oasis Springs um, overlooks like um, a cliff and it's it's just so beautiful. And, you know, I just tried to make this place look really relaxing. There's a couple of spa day items in there. You know, there is that meditation chair. I don't know what it's called. And there's also this yoga mat as well. Um, and they do work. 
I've tested it out and everything actually works really well. Um, and yeah, so no need to worry. I did kind of use the move objects cheat quite a lot in this build, but no need to worry about things not working. But yeah, it looks like that is going to be it for the speed build. The rest of it, I will be doing off camera. So there's a little bit of a surprise for you guys in the end. But stay tuned for next week's speed build. It's going to be the summer dream house. But yeah, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up my commentary right here. Once again, please don't forget to hit that like, favorite, and subscribe button if you guys had fun watching this video because it really helps out the channel a lot, okay? You all have an awesome, awesome, awesome day. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.